habitat we're coming into now. This is what we call our arid zone. So the animals that you find in this area have evolved and adapted to not need a whole lot of water. So they live in some of the drier parts of the world. So after the last few days we've had here in Melbourne, you've got to imagine that this is one of the drier parts of the world. <laughs> uh, we'll head up towards where our first animals are chilling out, relaxing at the moment. And we'll have a bit of a talk about them. Yellowstone National Park alone, there's actually estimated to be about 60,000 of them. They're going pretty well. Now my favourite fact about the bison guys is that when they are first born, their fur is bright orange. It's actually almost the same colour as the seats you're sitting on there. The reason they believe they're born with the bright orange fur is so that their parents don't mistake them for a rock and step on them. A little bit awkward, but um, Sure, we'll go with that. Now just on the right, sticking on the right hand side here guys, just next to the bison, we've got some beautiful horses there. Now these guys are what we call a Mongolian wild horse. Also known in their native language in Mongolia as Taki. Now what's really interesting about the Taki guys is they were actually thought to be completely extinct. That there was none left anywhere in the world whatsoever. And then they found a group of 13 of them living in a private zoo in Russia. Now from that 13, they were actually able to rebreed the species. To the point where they've now released about 300 of them back into the wild as well. So they are a literal success story. They have come from the brink of extinction back to being found in the wild again. Now the other cool thing about the Taki guys is they are one of the only pure wild horses left in the world. Now what I mean by that is they have never been domesticated and never been ridden. Guys, if you actually keep looking off to the right, just behind the trees there, you'll see an animal that we don't often see on the safari tour because they're usually off hiding behind the trees. But just in that paddock there with the grey fur and the horns are some of our Niala. Now we do see Niala later on the tour, even today. But those ones you see in there are the males. And they've got the grey fur with the, the grey shaggy coat hanging down underneath them. Whereas the females that we'll see later on, they've got um, a brown fur with white stripes in it. Yeah, they're a little bit tricky to see in there, but uh, it's kind of cool to see the males. You don't really often see them. Have a look on our left hand side here guys as we come past. Just behind some of our trees there you will spot some of our camels. Now the camels we have here at Werribee Zoo are what's called dromedary camels. Also known as one hump camels. And it is pretty obvious where they get that name from. They've got that one hump on their back there. Now there are also in the world there are what we call Bactrian camels. Which have two humps. So two humped camels. And does anyone want to take a guess what we call a camel with no humps? Humphrey. Oh yeah, we still got the dad jokes. Don't worry about that, guys. Now, there is a bit of a myth about the camel, though. That that hump that you see on their back is full of water. That is, in fact, just that. It's a myth. It's not true. 
that hump that you see on their back there is actually full of body fat. So it's almost like having a portable kitchen pantry on your back. If they ever get hungry or thirsty, can't find any food or water around, they can access that body fat to keep themselves going. I've got the exact same thing in my body, guys, except mine's around my waist. It's a little bit tricky to see from here, though, but if you have a look at their eyes as well, their camels have got these big, beautiful eyelashes. And the reason for the eyelashes is not so that they can model and go on the catwalk in a beautiful fashion. It's actually to keep the, uh, the desert storm sand out of their eyes. Now as we come around this corner here though guys, if you have a look on the right hand side, you're going to see what looks like from a distance oversized goats. They're not oversized goats. They're what we call scimitar horned oryx. Now unfortunately the oryx are actually classed as extinct in the wild. So you will only see them in zoos around the world nowadays. But it's pretty obvious where they get their name from. They've got that big beautiful horn on their head there, curved like a scimitar sword. Now the cool thing with the Oryx guys is these are actually where the myth of the unicorn is believed to have originated. Now what I mean by that is as we go past them, you'll see they do have two horns. But when you get a side view of them, do you notice how their two horns always blend into one? Looks like they've only got one horn. It's believed that when Europeans first started to see these guys as they immigrated around the world, they thought they were unicorns in disguise they were making themselves look like they magically had two horns in the hope to, uh, to blend in with the other animals around them. Well, we are about to leave our arid zone now, guys, and head on through to our next habitat area. But to get to the next area, we do need to do a river crossing. So I hope you've all worn your swimsuits today. Have no fear, guys, this river hasn't flooded. We do have some, we are going to go through it. We are going to get the wheels of the bus, we're not, not going too deep though. But as we go through the water guys, keep an eye out because there is an animal that lives in this water. In fact, this animal, one of its closest relations is actually the dolphin. Now we don't have dolphins at Werribee Zoo. What we've got instead are on our left hand side having a bit of a nap on the river's edge. We've got some hippopotamus just there. So we've got two hippos just there, guys. Their names are Brenda Bella and Pansy. They're actually mother and daughter. So the one on the left is Brenda Bella. The one just behind her is her daughter, Pansy. So they're both having a nap together, touching bottoms. Now, guys, I've got a bit of a random question for everybody about hippos. Can hippopotamus swim, yes or no? Well, lots of people saying yes. Guys, believe it or not, hippos can't swim. They don't swim like we think of swimming. What they do is they walk into the water where they sink to the bottom and walk along the riverbed. Just like a horse walks on land. And that's actually where hippopotamus get their name from. So hippopotamus is a Greek word. It translates roughly into English as water horse because they walk along a riverbed like a horse on land. Now guys, we're just coming into our next habitat area now. This is what we call our woodlands waterhole area. It gets its name from the big water reservoir we have in the middle of it, which feeds a lot of water around the zoo. Sorry guys, just one second. Guys was just making contact with this youth that's driving straight at us. It's all right, he's decided we're bigger. <laughs> but we're coming into our woodlands waterhole, guys. So this area gets its name for the big water reservoir in the middle of it. It a lot of water around the zoo, but also attracts a lot of native birds from all over Melbourne to this area. So we get lots of ducks and geese and swans and hawks and eagles and ibis and 
all fly around this area? Off the bottom, we have their babies in here. But then you probably notice we do have our own animals in here too. We've got some on our left hand side there. It's, you can spot some of our ostrich. Now what you're looking at up along the hill there guys are female ostrich. It is very easy to tell the difference between male and female ostrich. The females tend to be a little bit smaller than the boys and they've got dusty brown feathers whereas the males have got jet black feathers. Now just before I talk about what's on our right hand side here guys, right next to the bus on the left we've got a couple of Cape Barren geese coming up and they've got their goslings with them as well. So I just mentioned we get a lot of wild birds that fly in and out of here and they often come in here to have their babies because they know it's a safe haven for animals. There's no predators around. But speaking of eggs, have a look on the right hand side there guys. You will spot some ostrich eggs there. Now they are real ostrich eggs. They are however unfertilized so they're not gonna reason being is we've only got the females here. But uh, just to give you a comparison guys, one ostrich egg is about the equivalent of 20 chicken eggs. Or one really big omelet. But uh, back to the ostrich themselves over there. Now, ostrich do have a bit of an interesting diet. Their diet consists of things like leafy greens, fruits and vegetables. Sometimes they will eat lizards and frogs and Rocks. Ostrich eat rocks. Now guys, the reason that ostrich eat rocks is not because their brains are smaller than their eyeballs, although that is true. It is because ostrich don't have any teeth. So they cannot chew their food. So what they do is they swallow a few rocks, those rocks go down into their stomachs, and then as they run around, those rocks will bounce around in their tummies, squish up all the other food they've eaten helping them digest it. Yeah. So kids, keep that fact in mind. You don't want to brush your teeth your teeth fall out. I'm just going to have to eat rocks. Not very nice. Now guys, just as we come around this little corner here, we've got a couple more animals here. I'm going to talk about the ones off in the distance on the left hand side first. Seeing under the trees over there, there's some brown antelopes. Now they are actually called Niala. Now we saw some um, Niala earlier. We saw the males in next to the Mongolian wild horse. Over there is our herd of females. You'll see they look very different. They've got the brown fur with the white stripes on it as opposed to the gray fur. Now the reason for the brown and white stripes is it's actually a form of camouflage. Not so much blending in with the colors of the trees they like to sleep under though. It's actually more to do with the doppled sunlight coming through the tops of the trees. So as the sun comes through the top, the white sun, the, the light hits their white stripes and segments their body off so predators can't tell where their body ends and where the shadows of the trees begin. And just in front of us guys, we've got our herd of Indian blackbuck crossing the road. So these are one of the smaller antelope species you'll find. They can run incredibly fast though. These guys can run at speeds of up to about 80 kilometers an hour. So they can get pretty quick when they want to. Now do you see how in the middle of the herd there, one of them looks a bit different to the others? That one in the middle there is our adult male. The rest of what you're looking at there are either female or very young. So when they're young, the males and the females all look the same. They got those breath that brown fur and then as the males get older their fur turns black and they start to grow the horns hence the name black buck buck being the males and now guys if you've ever been to werribee zoo before you'll know this is usually where we turn off and go across the bridge down over the werribee river and over to the other side but unfortunately due to the major flooding we've had here in victoria over the last few days We've had a bit of damage done to the bridge and our bridge was actually about two and a half metres underwater when it normally sits about four metres above the water. 
You can see the bridge there if you look through the trees. It has got a little bit of damage on it, this um, checking out and reporting on it at the moment. But can you see, if you look off to the left, just past the ostrich, can you guys see that, that concrete water uh, water container there, water tank? The, that was uh, at the river's edge yesterday. So that was how high the river got. Now, thankfully, all of our animals that are out, that are out on our savannah and on the other side are safe, I can assure you. We've got higher ground areas on that side of the river that we were able to bring them up to.